Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer, and in this video we're going to cover inheritance. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. So today we're going to cover inheritance by starting to create our pieces of our chess game. Uh, all pieces have similar attributes that can be shared across all pieces, which means this is the perfect example to illustrate in inheritance. You may have heard of the concept of inheritance before when learning biology. And the programming concept of inheritance is very similar. So subclasses inherit from a super or parent class. Just like you inherited traits from your parents, subclasses inherit the traits of their superclass. So in this video, we're going to create a piece superclass and show how, how all the subclasses will inherit from those classes. Okay, with inheritance, you have a superclass and any number of subclasses. So in our code today, we're going to work with a superclass called abstract piece, and then we're going to create the subclasses of that abstract piece, which is a pawn, bishop, knight, rook, queen, and king. All right, so now let's take a look at the definition of an abstract piece. Okay, so here we have the class definition of an abstract piece. All right, so an abstract piece is going to have the following fields. A piece color object that's going to represent the piece's color the current square that that piece is on, on the board, and then the string name representing the name of the piece, okay? And then the methods associated with this abstract piece are gonna be get piece color, get name, get current square, and set current square. So set current square is gonna allow us to move a piece um, on, on, on our chessboard, okay? So let's take a look and see what this looks like in code. And so now let's get into it. So we're gonna create our fields. We're gonna say protected string name. I'm gonna say protected piece color, piece color. And we're gonna say protected square, current square, like so. All right. And now we have to create a constructor. So we're gonna say public abstract piece. And then we're gonna pass in piece color, piece color. All right, so at con this is basically saying at construction time, we expect every single subclass of abstract piece to have a piece color set. So we're going to say this dot piece color is equal to piece color. Okay. And now we just need to generate our getters. So we're going to say generate getter for all three like this. And then we also need a setter for get set current square. All right. And then lastly, we're going to generate the two string method for this class. All right, awesome. So that's abstract piece. Now let's create a new Java class and we're gonna call it pawn. So we're gonna implement this pawn class and we're gonna say extends abstract piece. And it's giving me this red squiggly underneath that basically says there's no default constructor available for abstract piece. So we need to create a constructor matching the super class. So this constructor takes in a piece color, and then calls super on passing in that piece color. So super is just a way Java calls the constructor for the super class, okay? So that this, this line right here is just calling this constructor right here, okay? So now let's go back into pawn, and then we can say this.name is equal to pawn, all right? So let's create another one. So we're gonna say new Java class, and we're gonna say queen, and we're gonna say extends abstract piece, and we're gonna say create matching constructor, and then this.name is equal to queen. Whoops, like so. All right, so I'm gonna do that for the remaining pieces. Okay, so I've created all the pieces. I've created a bishop, king, knight, pawn, queen, and rook. All right, so let's see what this looks like. So let's jump over to our game class. And so here I am in our game class with our main method. And I'm just going to create a piece color, piece color, or say color is equal to piece color dot dark. All right, so we're just gonna use this for all the pieces that we're gonna create. And then I'm also gonna create a static method inside of game. So we're gonna say public static uh, void print uh, piece, and then we're going to pass in an abstract piece, and then we're just going to say piece, 
and then system.out.println piece.toString. Awesome. Now, okay, so let's create our first piece. We're gonna say we're gonna call it an abstract piece, p pawn is gonna be equal to a, a new pawn, and then pass in that color value. All right, and then we're gonna call game.print piece on the pawn. All right, so basically we're passing in this pawn value into this function down here, which is gonna print it. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so here we have, we see that a piece was printed and it says the name is pawn and the color is dark, which is great. All right, so that means everything's working properly. All right, so now what happens if we rename this to, to be explicitly a pawn? All right, so the compiler isn't warning us about anything, so let's run it again. And we see that we get a pawn printed out. Okay, so now let's say we have an abstract piece queen, and we're gonna say equals to new queen of color. Right, and now I say game dot print piece of queen. All right, no warnings, so let's hit play, and then we see abstract piece pawn, abstract piece queen. Great. So this is working how we expect, and then when we say put in the concrete implementation for queen, we should get the same result as we did before. Great. So now I want to show you the implications of this, right? So if instead we had a print piece but only passed in a queen, right? We can't pass in a pawn, an explicit pawn, into the print piece for queen. So we'd have to create a second method that passed in a pawn, okay? And now if we run this and we see that abstract piece pawn abstract piece queen. And so this function is what's getting called for this game.print piece. We did some method overloading here. So we're going to cover that in a future video. All right, so now let's go back. And then we're going to see, all right, so abstract piece. All right, so now it works again. And the importance of this is that every Every concrete piece, so rook, queen, pawn, knight, king, bishop, extends abstract piece. So in a sense, we are passing in an abstract piece into this function, okay? So it's, it's basically calling the toString function that we defined inside of this abstract piece class, okay? Now, so what would happen if instead we said pawn and then we passed in, let's comment this out. If we said, instead of pawn, we said abstract piece. Ah, so, so now we're getting an error. So this is what happens when you try to pass in a super class into a function that's expecting a different concrete implementation, right? So, and this is because we cannot guarantee that any abstract piece, so in this sense, it could be a queen, it could be a knight, it could be a bishop, could be a rook. We cannot, we cannot guarantee that an abstract piece has all the functionality that a pawn possesses. Okay, so that's very, a very subtle uh, uh, piece of information there, right? So every, we can guarantee that every pawn, queen, rook, knight, king has the functionality of an abstract piece, but we can't do the reverse. We can't guarantee that a pawn, every, every abstract piece is gonna have the functionality of a pawn, right? So that's why this isn't working. So let's change it back to abstract piece, and then we can put any combination of the pieces in. So we can put, pass in an abstract piece directly, or we can pass in the subclass directly, all right? So, um, so I hope you got something out of this video. I think abstract classes and, and inheritance are extremely important part of um, object-oriented programming. So what this will allow us to do in the future is pass in the superclass throughout our game and not necessarily have to worry about the specific concrete implementations, okay? So we've provided an abstraction around the pieces that we can then use throughout our game and we don't need to worry about the concrete implementation of whether it's a queen or a pawn. We can then use the internals of each concrete implementation to define its own functionality, all right? 
So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks.